I'm TJ Avery, and this is my scale model of a DMAG CC5800. Okay. So the model, I've worked on it for three years. Initially three years, most of it was built. And I finished up in 2014. And then in the three years after that, up until now, I've been tweaking and fixing things here and there. Like I've had problems with the motors down below and the gear train, I had to fix that. Um, I think it uses around 2,000, I'm sorry, 20,000 pieces. And the whole thing weighs close to 90 pounds. Uh, Do you know how tall it is? When, when I boom straight up, it can get close to about 10 feet. Wow. <laughs> so I have plans to make it longer maybe, but I got to work on the, the counterweight system and okay. figure that out. So when you first started this build, did you just kind of build from the ground up or as you were laying out the plans, how did that come together? Started with the turntable because okay. that's probably the most complicated, mechanically, the most complicated part of the crane. It's, it's pretty difficult to do things in a circle with Lego elements, usually. Mm -hmm. And a turntable has a lot of concentric rings inside because there's, there's rollers inside and circular structures. So I started with that. And once I got that figured out, then I planned out the rest of the crawler base. Um, one of the big ideas for the track was to go with a brick-built track out of studless beams. So the way the crawler actually works is a little bit different than real life. At, at each end, there's a roller that's not powered. So in real life, like a bulldozer, you'd have a sprocket, say, at the end that's powered. But in my crane, the small rollers in between the two ends are the powered ones. Okay. So it's just the weight of the crane sitting on top of those rubber rollers. They use old... Uh, uh, model team tires, you know, real solid rubber. That's what propels the crane forward. And the tracks are extremely strong. They can take a lot of abuse, especially when the crane, what they call skid steers. It's like when you turn a corner. Get going here. And spin it like this. Even in the real machines in real life, this puts an incredible amount of stress on the tracks. And standard Lego crawler tracks just wouldn't stand up to this. They'd break apart. So I decided to do this, and it works pretty well. <laughs> yeah, that's really impressive. So you mentioned earlier kind of the counterweight system. If you want to talk, talk us through some of that area and kind of how that works to, to keep the whole crane together here? Yeah, just like a real crane, you have to have a big set of weight in the back to counteract all the weight that hangs out the front. The boom is extremely heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, anything you lift is has a significant amount of weight way out there. So it's a balance of, of forces about some point within the crane body. And if that balance of force gets outside of the crane's footprint, the crane's in trouble uh, or in danger of tipping over, just like in real life. So. Yeah, very interesting. Then as far as all the strings you've got going here, is this sort of official Lego string that you wanted to use that or, or what are you using there? Yeah, it's braided nylon, okay. like you can get uh, in a fishing section in a yeah. sporting goods store. and it. It functions just like Lego string, but of course you can get it in hundreds of yards. So that, I had to go that way because I needed a lot of string. Mm -hmm. So then with the whole, the main part of the crane here, what all moves around and what all can you, can you do with this? We saw it driving earlier. What the rest of it, how does that work? Okay, it's got five functions. Left crawler, right crawler, turntable. That's all down below okay. the turntable. And then above the turntable, I've got uh, a hoist to drive the main hook up and down, lift, lifting objects and then another hoist to uh, angle the boom back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I could, I'm planning on adding a sixth function to maybe uh, adjust the angle of the jib like on the fly instead of having it static like it is now. But it has 30 motors total, all Lego motor. Uh, the control system is non-Lego. I, I messed around with power functions for a while. I wanted it to be all Lego, but it didn't work quite as well as I wanted. So I went with a, a VEX system a transmitter, receiver, and motor controllers mm -hmm. to control the Lego motors. And it worked out pretty good. Yeah. So have you ever had any disasters as you've worked on versions of this over the years where the whole thing, you know, a string breaks or something and it just collapses? Yeah, yeah many times. Okay. In fact, the last time I was in Dallas with the big crane, I had a, a bigger crane than this. It was about 15 feet tall. And it cratered during the show. Oh the, I let the boom out a little too far. It didn't have enough counterweight like we were just talking about so that it became unstable and the whole thing tipped forward and picked up momentum and then slammed to the ground and wow. just <laughs> big crash. Okay. So, yeah, I've had disasters. Yeah. yeah. But I imagine you learn from those and do oh, better sure. next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Definitely well, never ever put Sprite cans in the back as a counterweight. <laughs> when that crane went over, a lot of those soda cans exploded. And I just picked up all the parts, dumped it in the tub, went home, forgot about it for a couple months. When I finally dug back into my parts to disassemble it, everything was coated with a sticky, sticky, nasty goo oh, from yeah. the soda. <laughs> yeah. So Good pro tip there. I learned a lot. <laughs> How'd you decide on this red and white color scheme for it? Just the number of parts that I have. Okay. Over the years, I've collected tons of red and white parts. And so if I want to build something big, I need a lot of parts. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to color. Yeah. And it mimics most real cranes anyway. Most of them are red or white or yellow. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So when you bring this in and out of a show, is it all just one section or does it break down in different parts? How does that work? It's just like a real crane. It breaks down into manageable chunks. Okay. And right behind me are two big wooden crates that I built, specialized to hold the crawler base and the, some of the parts of the upper structure. And then I've got some plastic tubs over there in the corner to store the boom sections. Mm -hmm. So it just all breaks down and packages up. Yeah. Very awesome. So can you demonstrate some of the, the functions here that you were mentioning earlier? You can see, see how this works here. Okay, so you got left crawler and right crawler. And at the same time, we can spin the turntable. So that's the base of the crane and how it functions. And then the main hoist going up, going down. It's pretty boring. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> Just like a real crane, it takes a long time. And then the boom going out or back in. And that's it, the five functions. Yeah. Very impressive there. Thank you. It kind of sounds just like a real crane. I've been out in construction yards, so I'm a structural engineer. And when you have these big machines and they spin around like that, it makes a horrendous racket. There's all kinds of metallic clanging and banging. And unfortunately, that's kind of what my, my crane sounds like. I'm probably uh, mashing up some parts in there somewhere. Imagine the wear and tear are pretty strong there. Yeah. But I've got it on this carpet to kind of help not scratch up the, the treads too bad. You can see the surface. They're pretty scratched up. If I run it over a hard surface, you know, it'll capture dust and debris underneath and start and really scratch them up. Mm -hmm. But as long as I'm on a flat level surface, uh, works fine. Just like a real crane would. Yeah. Oh, and the scale is 1 to 17. So I built figures, these, all these guys down here, to approximate 1 to 17, uh, say a 6-foot adult. Yeah, okay. I have a bunch of old-style Technic figs, but they're a little too small. They might be teenagers, but I wanted full-size uh, adults.